All right, hey everyone. It's time to do another YouTube video and finish up this floor plan that we began a few months ago. Now this time I want to introduce you to the uh, floor plan card that we're going to use and the SVG version. It's been a while because I've actually been busy. Um, one, I've had to redo a lot of my floor plan in itself. I've um, optimized it a lot more. I got rid of tabs. I just wanted everything to be now based on the floor plan. And that means I can also get information views and have full control of everything within this uh, view. So there's been a lot of work done to this in recent days or recent months actually. Getting stats, created my own card to get stats between dates. Had to do a little bit of fiddling around there. Uh, logs. And this is all based on which area. So if I go into backyard, if I just hold down, I get the um, information I need just for the backyard and so forth. Also got, I changed these around. These are now WLEDs. Which, um, with my honeycomb menu, you can change the other parameters send by um, UDP and palette color and all sorts. A lot better in my opinion than the setup I had previously. And just other bit of adjustments here. Um, click to get a full screen of a person's GPS coordinates, search by date and time, update the map to reflect those and so forth. Yeah, so it's been very, very busy in regards to doing all this. And you know, everything else is still similar. And the vacuum cleaner now has a different view. But that was the idea. The idea was to have everything within reach on this one view. Because I just don't see the reason of having multiple buttons doing the same things in different views. I'm not sure what the camera's doing. There we go. And, um, you know, just... It's a centralized system as such. As these other two cameras will load, and then I've got all my cameras within view just by that button there as well. And again, we got, um, let's, you know, living area. Let's do a little acorn. Akunda. Akunda. Wakunda. <laughs> And as you can see, well, as you can see down here, it brings up any speakers within this group, speaker group, and um, I can control those volumes manually as well because they're actually playing. So whatever's playing or speaker is playing will be showing up here. But play that. And within the view, you could see them flashing in what rooms those speakers are attached to and what's playing. So that's been a bit of an effect. Um, I'm not sure if you hear the noise in the background, but that's the 3D printer. It's 88% at the moment, so that's almost um, complete and um, should finish up soon. I'm only doing a quick uh, print for one of my garden, uh, light garden holders. Anyway, that's just a short introduction to the recent changes. If we go into now, can't actually, I can't actually see what I've got open because it's got a yellow bar around the um, recording area. But I've created a new view, a new dashboard, sorry. So if we go into dashboards, you can see I've created one floor plan tutorial. I've put that here, and my original is overview. So you can tell where we are and follow along. But over my main, you got my original, then you got floor plan with nothing in it. And this is where we are going to start from. For starters, I want you to have a look into HA floor plan. Download that card. You can get a lot of information on their website, documentation, and you can get examples. It's got, it's very, very clean. It's dynamic. And that's what I like about it. It's very dynamic in regards to your XML 
uh, sorry, not XML, um, YAML code and JavaScript functions with inside it. A lot of things like here, and they're using the backtick um, JavaScript uh, recent edition, which is really, really good. I actually like how they did that. And you can, it's just got, it's just so flexible. I love it. And um, so I'm going to work with this and ask you to download that from their GitHub, go to the releases, download their source code, or I think they might have a, um, actually, I think you can only do it manual. I'm not too sure, but I do everything manual. I don't use um, hacks or HACS or whatever it's called. So just go in here. Download their source code. I'm just going to put that on my desktop for now. Just to find out what's inside. HA floor plan, we got source distribution. We want only care about distribution. Now put that into your WW folder where you put your cards normally. So mine is normally WW cards. And I create a folder with the name. So I'll create a folder called floor plan, which I've already done here. Inside there, you'd have you'd put your floorplan.js file. Then inside the back end of um, or front end, whatever you decide to call it for Home Assistant, go to Lovelace dashboards and we go to resources. Then we just add that resource, which will be local as the www folder. Then we do uh, or well, wherever you place it in the WW folder and make sure you add the JS file. Now we always add these version or equals a um, number or it could be anything. It can even just be 1.05 or however you want to put it. The reason being is to stop a um, cached version from always reloading. So when a new update comes out and you replace that file, a 9 out of 10 times it will probably use the cached version. And to override that, we put this at the end to trick the browser or even Home Assistant to thinking it's actually a completely different file. As the anything after the question mark is actually just um, query parameters. They're actually kind of irrelevant to the path of a file. Just depends if the file or server wants to um, pro process that um, query parameters. So once you've got that in place, you can finally start using the HA card, HA floor plan card. And if you've set up your view ready to put in, we'll go in and we'll start with, so I've got a clean slate here, floor plan tutorial, config YAML, which is the configuration for the views and the actual dashboard itself. Um, you'll see Lovelace Gen up here. That's because I've got Lovelace Generator. Um, it's not needed. I probably won't even use it for this, so I'm just going to get rid of it anyway. But I do use it for many other um, YAML scripts, which makes coding a lot more fun in YAML and a lot more flexible as well. I just love dynamic code. That's just me. Anyway, so we're going to Views. We go to Title, Floor Plan, or whatever you call it, Path, Icon, yada, yada, yada. And then we're going to Cards. So in cards, we are going to want to add this new floor plan card. And we'll get it. Did I open here? We'll go into documentation for it. And we'll go along together in regards to using. So usage. Uh, my 3D print just finished, so there's no more fan noise in the background, which is good. Now... Ideally, we should be starting with creating our SVG file. And these are the actual parameters and um, that you use for the card itself. So I'm going to start by just adding that into our view, um, views. And we're going cards, and we're going to do panel to make sure it's full width. And you can start off with the card as the HA floor plan, which I'll do in this case. But you could also use a um, vertical stack, a custom layout card or anything, then put it inside that, which gives you a little bit more flexibility as well. Um, every custom card always starts off with custom. 
Uh, I think this one's called HA Floor Plan. And if you don't mind, I will go back and forth sometimes just to reference what I've done in my own. And, um, you know, so we can keep the flow going instead of having to pause, breaks, find out what the hell is going on and so forth. So custom floor plan card. I'm going to go check over just to make sure that one's right. Uh, views, sorry, I use views here. HA Floor Plan. And as you can see, it's all messy on this side. I've got to do a little bit of um, housework cleaning up there. Now we got, okay, auto entity. So in this, you can see how I've got my view laid out a lot more differently. And I've used a custom layout vertical, maximum width and all that. Reason being because I've got, as we go over, these um, extra buttons, these um, extra entities here and there, then the floor plan card. So that's the reason why there's a bit more detail in my YAML file here. Um, further down, we got picture elements. Um, you can also, uh, it's actually a good idea to use picture elements as well, along with the HA floor plan. It gives the um, ability to also place, so that's why I did mine, is because you can use a floor plan card inside picture elements, but then you can also add these actual static buttons on top and still be within reach and you can position it to how you want. So while this is all SVG behind and these parts are SVG and so forth, these are not SVGs and these are actually just um, regular buttons. So as we got here, we got SVG floor plan, which will be, I've got it in here. Don't mind my, um carving here it's a bit all over the place and that's why it's hard for me to just upload a um, YAML file or something just to you know copy and paste because it doesn't quite work like that for my kind of configuration so as we can see so it's actually sorry floor plan card and this is really what we're going to be dealing with all this stuff and this is pretty much all the inf well states and everything that renders my card as it is the um svg version as it is and reacts to all sorts and it's really long because it is so dynamic but as you grow and as you um configure along it it just becomes more natural and um you know it'll work for your own kind of plan as such and won't be as long or it could be even longer. So we're going to change this from HA floor plan to floor plan card. Then, as we can see on their website, you want to do image. We're going to start off with image and use your local path, which is your www path. And I got mine. In floor plan tutorial, I'm going to start there. And when we create the SVG file, I'm just going to call it floor plan. I'm going to call it underscore optimized, and I'll show you why later on. Optimized. Yes, it's one of those days. Optimized. Now, we are Australian, and we use S's instead of Z's for optimize, I'm pretty sure. Anyway, floor plan, optimize.svg. And we also want a style sheet. I think it's called style sheet. Just double check. Yes, style sheet. And we are just going to call that copy and paste, and we're just going to call that floor plan CSS. Uh, dot CSS. So we get to inject our own styles from our own style sheet to manipulate the SVG and gives that um, flexibility and freedom. So from here, what we should be doing, as long as everything's in place, we're going to put rules in in a second. You can add your own custom style if you're using card mod. Um, Again, it all depends on your own layout, how you want things to look and position. And, okay, so 
they, they've got it in the config. Um, so we're just going to go back over. So you got type, then you got config, then everything should be tabbed over from there. Most cards wouldn't have a config um, property and just have it all linear, but for some reason they chose to do it this way. No big deal. Config, image, uh, yada, yada. Uh, console log level, irrelevant, and we'll just add rules ready to put in place. Now, the rules is where all the magic happens. It's what you do to reflect and, you know, just have a quick read about the usage and examples. And you, you, you'll grab one pretty quick. It's not a huge documentation. It's, um, you'll get the hang of it really quickly. Then you'll start to get your own idea of how you want things to look based on what, what um, this card is capable of doing. So, let's, so the point of this video is just to give you a grasp of that, get, you, um, get your feet wet in regards to beginning using this card. And really you'll go off in go off on your own and create your own you know designs and and floor plans and you know something unique and impressive hopefully so we're going to go in here we'll go rules and we'll leave that as it is now if we save that we'll go in and i don't know if it's going to error out or not and we always want to refresh when we change yaml and even though we refreshed, nothing changed, nothing happened. And I guess because all the parameters are correct, there's no errors, but also because we don't have an SVG file to show, which I thought it might complain about. And I mean, at the end of the day, it could be just not even loading that view. <laughs> but no, it's got the floor plan card here. It's got the... um. AJ card, all of that. So what we'll do now, we're going to create our um, SVG file and we'll start with doing that in Inkscape. Inkscape is a free um, Illustrator kind of program. Um, it took me a while to get used to and compared to Illustrator, Adobe Illustrator, but um, it, it pretty much gives the same results. It just might be a little bit more patience involved here and there. But at the end of the day, it's about the end result, isn't it? So we're going new document. Now we are going to go. Okay, so we can go. You got your height millimeters. We don't want to work with millimeters. We're working with pixels, as this is all on digital displays. And if we go to WW in my floor plan tutorial folder, I've already put those renders in from the last video. So we got my renders. And we'll go next, and you know, we're going to be working with them. The main primary background is going to be the floor plan. And what we want to do is find out the parameters, well, the width and height. And that's what we are going to work with. And that is 920, 1920 by 1080. We'll go height uh, 1080 pixels to 1920. Why did that not work? 1920 pixels. All right, so that's our canvas. That's our beginning size. In um, in this Inkscape, we want to start, you know, structuring and start making sure everything's neat and tidy throughout our layers so it doesn't get beyond a um, position where it's getting too messy and hard to navigate. So layer one, we are going to call background. Now within that background, we are going to place an image. And I am doing really bad with spelling or my keyboard also doesn't always register the keys that I press sometimes as well. So we've got background. And within that, we are going to place one of the images. Go to import. Wonder if um sorry, I'm just gonna to try to see if click and drag works. If it does, then it'll make life easier for me. 
bitmap, image, import, embed, or link. We are going to do link. Yes, we are going to do link. Uh, default import, yep, sure. Um, sure. Sounds good, I guess. Now, we of course want this all to be zero, zero. X, zero. Um, sorry, Y, zero, X, zero. For some reason I think that's weirdly positioned. I want to make sure the height and width, maybe we need to change these. So height is 1080 pixels. Do something that's not right. View. If we go back here, view box. Uh, okay, okay. We're also going to change this to the same. Ten eighty by nineteen twenty. Then if we go back to our image. Sorry, if you want to get in into this area to um, navigate the XML, there's a button down here. I'm going to close this one first. Uh, then you'll have XML editor. That's what you want to use to get into here. And it allows you to easily structure the data better. So zero seems to put it into the center, not up the top left, which most programs do. And then we're going to change this back to 1080, 1920 pixels. And I'm going to have to reference my other one just to find out where. SVG is different to um, pixel based because it uses um, computer mathematics to render a, um, you know, lines and the pencils and all that. So that's why it's different to working with the numbers in um, illustrating programs than it is in like Photoshop. So I've got mine here. We're going to go to areas. I just want to have a quick look at the SVG. We got width. Okay, I don't think we do the pixels. 16 button. Okay, so we'll get rid of the pixels in this. Which I'm not sure it's going to make too much of a difference. Um, 1080 is it meant to be the other way around? Width 16, width first. So width. Okay, so we want width. 1920 by 1080. And there you go. That would be wires because of the width. Everything else seemed to have um, worked out fine. And I think I mentioned in the last video, sorry, I can't see what's open. So I'm, this is why it's taken me a while to actually look for what I'm trying to find down the bottom. Um, because the um, recording screen program creates a yellow bar around the screen of where it's recording and it's covering up the open programs. Now, if we go back here, go back to floor plan tutorial. Now, I'm just noticing that there's a, yep, so there's a cutoff there. And that was from the render I'd done in the 3D Max. I never went back in and um, re rendered. At the end of the day, this is for tutorial purposes. If I was to do this for my own floor plan, I would go back in, fix it up re-render then um yeah so forth so right now we got our first we got a background image and i think with that in place we should do a quick export just to make sure everything's um working and we'll display in the front end so let's go and close that now I'm going to, sh actually what we'll do, we're going to save this first. Now I tend to save into the same folder as the renders and everything else. And we're going to call this floor plan dot SVG. No, yep, SVG. And I'll save that. 
Now, this, that, that save is not the one we're using. This save is the one that we go to when we want to make adjustments and so forth. The one that we want to save, we're going to do now, save a copy. Now, we're going to do save a copy, not save as or anything, because if we do save as, it will change the file to that save as, and every save from then on will overwrite. So we do save a copy. Then we are going to go, instead of Inkscape, we are going to go optimized SVG. And now we are going to call this floor plan underscore optimized SVG. And that's the one that this is going to be using. So think of floor plan dot SVG is the one for editing and the optimized is the one for displaying. So we're going to save that. And these are the options I've used. Shorten color values, convert CSS attributes to XML attributes, um, workaround and so forth, SVG, remove metadata, remove comments. Um, and yeah, so forth. They're just basic stuff here. And if you got everything similar to that, we shouldn't have a problem. Let's go OK. Now you can. Now this is the other thing I want to make mention of. Let's go. I'm going to go back and quickly optimize just future so I don't forget. You can do SVG out output embed raster images. I think that's one resolve uh, reference and embed. Okay, so this one will actually turn the external images into an embedded image and place them in the file. Now there's pros and cons to both ways. The way that we're, we're doing it without it turned on is linking relatively to the path that it's um, placed in here. So when you do it that way, if you see here, I'm going to do, I'm going to turn this light on, then I'm going to turn that light on. That's really, um, some reason, brighten that and so forth. Now when I click, I'm going to do a hard refresh. Now you can see, you might have seen it, it's because it's local network, so it's going to be really quick. But the light image, the overlay, was also loading separately and gives a different effect. Now, I, that's really good. I mean, that's fine. When you do it like this, you're not going to notice. If you, if you have all lights on, you might notice it. Embedded will wait and load the whole SVG first, and you won't get that effect but it will take longer to download. And when I was using it on my tablet outside of my network, it was very, um, it looked very unnatural. So I st stuck with um, doing it this way. It's also uh, means that it had less, if you're doing it link, means that you're not loading um, irrelevant data. Meaning if this light wasn't on, this light wasn't on and so forth, then we didn't, then it's not downloading that kind of data whereas the SVG with it embedded will have to have that data already inside the SVG file, which makes it bigger and redundant. So choose what works best for you. This day and age, if you're working with local, I mean, a, um, embed, embedding the um, images isn't really, shouldn't be a bad idea, but that's just something to think about anyway. All right, so that was for the areas. Let's go back here. We've got... We save the file, so if we click on refresh, we don't have got the floor plan card, got the shadow, we got the HA, you got the content. There's a lot in the storm tree for some reason. In a minute, I've actually, what I might do is now is um, take a quick break because I've got to go do something anyway. I'll have a quick look into um, why it's not showing up in a second and um, we'll go from there. But I'll um, update you guys once I return.
thanks for waiting guys well technically you weren't waiting it's the magic of cut and stop and start recording again that brings us to where we are i um just went to check on my 3d print and checked i was okay i also just done a bit um looking around as to why the svg wasn't showing and there was a um it was easy to find out if you go into your console. There wasn't a um, CSS file, so it was erroring out before it even tried to load anything else. So what I did, um, simply place the um, floor plan and empty CSS file. That way, it finds the CSS file, then um, we'll load the uh, SVG file. Now, always make sure when you're in. Um, when you're changing things in the CSS file or the SVG file, we always do a empty cache and hard reload just to make sure everything's fresh. Um, that's different to the YAML files when we click on refresh. So whenever you edit something in the YAML over here, we want to do a refresh here. And whenever you want to edit something in the SVG or the um, CSS, we right-click. Um, you have to have inspect open first, then right-click, then do empty cache. And Hard reload. Now you can still see it's not uh, loaded properly yet, and we'll do having a look. And just drag down a bit. So we've got the SVG file, so it's definitely been loaded. It's um, showing up, but our background isn't showing because of the href now we're going to change floor plan just to make sure it works this way and change it to local forward slash uh depending wherever your floor plan structure is for the um main floor plan file we call this floor plan tutorial and there we go we got the um image so we're going to change that in here and where we go up here, we're going to do, I added this recently just as a test. So just add a new attribute and we call it href and we're going to change it to the path as a h as a um, URL path to it. So local, uh, floor, well, whatever you chose, floor plan underscore tutorial floor plan so once that's exported and optimized it'll keep that information that way it knows where to grab it locally if you're doing this embedded that's not going to be an issue um now we'll go save and what you can also do because you'll notice that let's change it here as well if we go to object properties background actually leave it there for now you got the um group id layer one now that group is actually background so we want to reflect that and we'll just change it here and as you can see um the inkscape label is background so the label for it in inkscape these are just inkscape attributes just to help ins inkscape um you know structures the way it should for um, when you save it. So we're going to change that to also background, but we're going to make it lowercase background. And you can see it updated. So when you export you sh you, your SVG file in an XM XML format, it should look similar to what's shown here. We got image ID image uh, one. Um, not important what you name that one but we'll just call this uh, we'll just call this main background and from here we're going to now put in our light overlays so let's go to the group and we're going to you can do it in either way, but I just prefer to do it this way. Let's go to add layers, and we're going to call this light 
overlays. Uh, above current, below current, a sub layer of current. So that is a sub layer of background, and as you can see, it's a layer here as well. We're going to change the ID. Also, reflect that to be light dash overlays. Remember, this is ID in XML format or HTML. We don't want spaces and we want to have things lowercase, neat, and tidy. So, group ID overlays. Now, in this overlays, we are going to add pretty much our overlay images. And I think the easiest way to go about this, we'll just copy. And in here, we can do there's a clone somewhere, duplicate node. That would be the one. And we're going to put that inside the light overlays. Then we change ID, image, so forth to. Um, this X-Link href should probably also be the same as this. Make sure that they're both the same. And in fact, that's not even spelled right. Tutorial. Trust me, make sure all your spelling and everything is configured right here first on your first one because we're always going to be duplicating just to save ourselves a lot of hassles. So make sure it's all right before we proceed. Um, floor plan. Floor plan. See, I'm not sure this one's needed. I think um, primarily this one is needed. So try them both, see what happens. Um, I'll get rid of that just to see what happens and we'll go from there. Now, this one we're not going to call floor plan. We are going to call it. Triple zero one all the way to triple zero nine. So go over, change that to zero 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 one as the first um, light overlay render. Again, zero 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 one. And I think those two are fine. Now I want to do. And as you can see, it pasted, puts it right where we needed it. It's a pretty much a duplicate of the background. Um, when we add our CSS, it, it all, all makes sense in the end. I just want to make sure we got everything right. So if I click on save and we do file, uh, save a copy, make sure we do that every time. And here we're going to do optimize, save. Click OK and replace. So that's been updated. Let's make sure everything is in sync. Maybe it needs to be href. So I'm just going to have another quick look at the source code just to make sure. I kind of remember having to do this when I was um, first playing around with it and getting to, so it, it's just um, kind of like deja vu for me. We've got floor plan container, floor plan finding the SVG. Now, if we go to background, so that one's not important. X link href. Link href, which somehow for some reason automatically converts it to the um, other file name. I'm just going to have a quick check just to make sure it wasn't a different attribute that I've used for my other one. So just bear with me for a quick second. Floor plan. I'm going to check the optimize. Edit notepad and i've got my background with light overlays image see so the x that's all fine as, as long as href is there and i don't think the href was but ah yep okay it was that spelling mistake that i didn't change on the other one as well 
So if we go here, now we got Xlink href. Okay, let's get back in, fix this up. So we're going to keep this one tutorial and everything else can stay the same, which I'm still not even sure why that one needs to be there. But I guess in a way it does just for this. I'm going to change that, that here. Then I want to get rid of hatred. No, every time I save it, it's changing that anyway. Okay. So, okay. We'll put that href in. And make sure it goes to this part. So the href is what matters for the um, HTML side of things. And these two matter for Inkscape to find where the, that um, file and images. So with that in mind, we are now going to go back into image, floor plan 1001, and we're going href, copy and paste, this was, Zero 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 one. The reason I was trying to do all that because I didn't want to have to change three different attributes for each one that we're going to duplicate before we start duplicating. So make sure all that's fine. Save a copy. If this is fine, then we're just um, going to go through and do the rest. Save. Click OK. Replace. In here. Right click, refresh, reload, and damn you bastard, why aren't you showing now? I know it's going to be something stupid, always happens to me. Uh, uh, I think it's just loading still, I don't, I didn't even do anything, but anyway. Okay, it, it seems to be fine, maybe... Well, while we're here, we'll just make sure the background was still being loaded properly. The main one. Oh, yeah, that's right. Background. And we're going to get rid of this for now. Just delete the element. And there's the background. Okay, so everything's loading properly. That gives me confidence to now go ahead and duplicate these. And we want a duplication for each of those um, 0 to 9. So we'll go again, duplicate, 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 du da, 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 da. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So these are all got zero zero ones. Now we're going to go through each one and do zero zero two. I'm going to pause and just go ahead and do the rest. All right, so I've gone ahead and um, done all of these now. There are three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, so now we want to change these IDs. The ID is going to be the magic as well with um, the floor plan card. Um, with these ones, we want to acknowledge the ID to be matching the entity of that light. So if we're going to be, actually it'll be easier 
go from here and look at what floor plan 001 is. And that's the lamp. So I'd call that whatever your entity is for that lamp, then um, you'll do uh, that as such. So if we go to ID, we're going to do each one. We'll start off with light underscore overlay then entity the entity name without the light domain in it so instead this one will do lounge i actually don't have a lounge lamp but i'm just going to use it for um these purposes lounge lamp and we would say that's the id for it but next one would be next uh that's the bedroom i think and that's the bathroom okay so 002 is bedroom and again we'll go in light dot overlay uh, sorry, light underscore overlay dot bedroom. And in my case, I use main for the um, top light. So if you can go into here, I'm just going to quickly show you in states. I'm going to go light. Now I'll call it master bedroom, sorry. And I'm going to change that to reflect the same. And I call light master bedroom main. So I'm going to change bedroom to master bedroom. So light underscore overlay dot master bedroom main. And remember, we don't put the light domain in it. Then do that for each of your light sources. All right, now that I've gone through and added all these IDs to be light underscore overlay um, dot their entity names, we will now go to add the actual elements that will toggle these lights. So, <clears throat> excuse me, my voice is getting a bit sore. So if we go down to background and we'll go to add layer, and this time we want to do areas, and we want this to be below the current layer. And now this is going to be actual specific areas for our floor plan and home. So if we go down. So that's above, I think we want it the other way around. It is because in XML, okay. When you look at layers in Illustrator and Photoshop, the ones on top are generally above. And it is reversed in XML, so I'm just trying to wrap my head around it. So we want this one to be up. And in XML, that will actually be down the bottom, which means that it has high priority over the um, in the tree. Um, we're going to change this ID again. Uh, areas, simple. And inside areas is where we are going to define some paths. Now, I'm pretty sure I use groups, and if you don't mind, I'm just going to quickly check just to save the hassle of changing things in the future. So I'm pretty sure I use, let's say, areas, um, G, ID, but yes, yeah, so they're all in groups. Um, so what we do, we're going to add another one. We're going to add a new element node, svg.group. 
previously I was changing, adding the um, SVG groups here. I also made a mistake by doing a um, dot G when it's meant to be um, double colon uh, G. So instead of doing it that way, it's probably easier just to um, just to minimize mistakes as well and just go to add layer from here. Then for each of those layers, we're going to do um, kitchen. Uh, next one, do master bedroom. And make sure that's in the areas and so forth. And here I'm just going to remove the other ones. And with the ID here, we can either change it in the XML part or we can go to Object Properties. You got ID, uh, sorry, got to make sure we got it locked on here. Now it's not going to... Don't know if you can change the ID from there, but anyway, if you can't do that, just change the ID here and change area. Uh, what's this kitchen? And again, area. Uh, that's master bedroom. Sorry, area. Master bedroom, and this one area kitchen. So forth. We now do the same. So again, add layer. Or I think if you can go here, you can do no. oh, you can do duplicate current layer and just click onto the properties for that one. And instead of kitchen copy, we'll do bathroom. And change the ID to area bathroom. So continue that, do it along till you've done each of the areas. All right, so I've gone ahead and done these areas. Um, you can see them all here, actually. So we've got areas, study, living room, dining, kids, bedroom, laundry, bathroom, kitchen, and master bedroom. Also um, toggled this off, so that's why you could see the main background. It's a good idea to keep that toggled off, but toggle it back on when you do save and save for your optimization version. So we'll turn that off. Actually, the reason I say that is because if you've done embedded uh, with the images, anything that's actually hidden won't be saved with it. Now, I'm not actually too sure about when you're linking, if um, it still links to that file or if it's hidden or something, but to be on the safe side, just uh, make sure it's all visible when you go ahead and save. So let's have a little recap. We've got background here. Background just has one uh, element for the image. Then it has a sub uh, group, sub layer called light overlays. In the light overlays, we have a light overlay image for every light overlay. Now in areas, we got a area for each um, room as such, or a toggle area. Now. From here, we are going to start off by going into, we'll start off with the first one, and that will be study. And we're going to um, create some space. So move that, move that over, move this over. So now we are going to zoom in. We are going to get the pen tool. I've already got that selected. Now hold down control and scroll wheel to zoom in. It might be um, easy for you. And um, you can scroll as well to go up and down, but that'll be easy. And what you want to do is outline the actual area. And as you'll see in my layout, this is how I've done mine. The line goes down, drags, stops, goes up, so forth. The good thing about um, SVG vector graphics is that I stopped it here, and well, it can start from here and end there. Then it creates an invisible line to point A to point B to make that all 
um, within a selectable area or within a field area. So I can still change and um, do that. So if you've got some kind of object that you don't want the line to show in, then just um, you can stop and start how you please. Not all the time it will work out the way you want it. You might have to um, trace around the object or something, but most times it does work. So if we go in, let's say, all right, so if we go down, we'll start doing a little drawing layer, and we want this chair to be included in it. So because it's a pen tool, we can do, sorry, I'm just going to zoom in. We can bend and so forth, and when, actually, sorry, So I'm just getting used to the controls again. All right, so down the bottom and around right about there. Again, if you make a mistake, you can always um, change it after. So we can go here, but close it up before you do that. So there I'm going to fix up later on. And to there. And I'll try to get it into the middle of the um, brick and the wall. Uh, go there. This is the window. And to so forth. It doesn't matter how you do it. If you want to go into real fine detail about your outline and go ahead, there's no wrong or right way about it. And then we can go here. I mean, originally I went straight through the objects, but then it started to look unnatural um, in a way. So I stopped at the objects and same would go for the next room across when I do the bedroom. I'd go back over and so forth. Go over. Finish up there. All right. So if we go now into this tool, we can actually start changing things and fix them up curve things a bit better this one can do with a curve i can't remember how to get the curve i think it's control no it's not it is shift so we can get a curve that way and get a curve that way um you know that's the good thing about vector graphics you can manipulate change things a bit and um make it look nice Oops, I'm going to put that back to where it was. Still don't really, I think it's meant to be over. Anyway, that's my OCD kicking in. Uh, could have gone over this chair, and if I want, and I'll show you here, we can. We'll just uh, double click, add to node, double click, add another node, and we're going to double click here. So we got these two locked in place, and I can bend around, bend it like back and and so forth. Now, I'm not overly great with this and the pen tool, but I generally get to the outline I'm after eventually. Once you play around with it for a bit, I mean, this could come down a bit over, straight up, and voila. Awesome. So, ah, stupid mouse. All right, let's go. We're back, zoom out. I think that can, yeah, I don't like that. That can come over a bit. So we're going to grab this, bring it over to about, to about there, I think. So that was for study. We'll close that off and click. Save. And I just want to show you, I'm going to load it up XML Editor, and inside the area study, we now have a path, and that's a path we just made. So now we are going to continue and do one for each room. I'll do one more with you, then we'll, I will pause the video, skip ahead, and, you know, hopefully we've got similar results. What I'll do this time, I think I'll go and do... Actually, I'll, I'll go do the bedroom so you can see how I do it next door to the other one. So let's make sure we're on master bedroom layer. 
and click on the pen tool. And it's a good idea to bind it to an actual point from the other one. And we'll start here, go over the um, drawers, go back in, over, Now, I wouldn't normally do it like this. Normally, I'll have it in the middle and go up straight like that. Again, once you've done it, is that's the time you'll go back, fine-tune everything anyway. I'm just going to be rough about this. I don't want to spend too long on it. Um, go down and up, across, back in the middle. And we join to here. And we join to the next one and so forth from the other room. This makes sure that everything is very nice and tight. And then we link back up and we have our finished result. Oh, wait. Forgot to do this stupid chair again. So we'll add a. And yep, shouldn't have done it that way. Add one there, add one there. Then we go up. I want to find where the other, not snapping support for some reason. Oh, uh, well, we're just going to be rough here. So there and there. And sure. <laughs> anyway, so that's how you go about doing that room. I don't know what I just did there. I, think I, was, I didn't know you could actually do that. Cool. So now you lock that one in, and that will be for master bedroom. It's got a path now. And do the same for the other areas that you got. All right. So I have literally, literally, uh, sped, sped through and created these um, paths for each of the areas, and they the, <laughs> they are really um, dodgy. But anyway, the point is to get through this. So I don't want to spend too long on it. Now that we have areas done, we can actually go ahead and create a new uh, layer, and we can call this one Entities. Uh, we'll do this above current which by definition should put that down the bottom. Yes, it does. All right, so we got entities. I'm going to call the ID also entities in the SVG XML editor. Um, with the entities, what we want to do is for anything that we want selectable, like maybe the TV. Yeah, well, why not? We'll do the TV now. And... You can either start off and put it in a group or just um, use the path as itself. And we can go down and we'll just say the TV is that. So this is an entity that's selectable. Again, another dodgy outline. And if you want to make it a bit more easy to see, we can stroke or even say for all the entities, we'll just do um, more of a bluish color. Doesn't matter what we do inside uh, Inkscape because SV, um, CSS will um, change it for us and reflect the way we want it to be viewed on HTML. So with this um, path ID, I'm going to call the we want to call the path or the ID of that object, and this one you can actually do and change here. Just to, for consistency sake, I'm going to change it down here. And we're calling this media player. Now this needs to match. Sorry, um, this needs to match the actual entity name. And we're calling this media player. Um, I'm just going to use my living room TV. Living I'm just gonna call TV. Now I've got. I think it's Android. Living room TV. Will do, and that will allow that to be um, selectable. And again, 
We'll do the same and we'll do it for the lamp this time. The lamp is more of a circle, but we can actually say we'll do a circle. And I'm going to call that, what was it, the lounge lamp or living room lamp to get that. I'm going to make it reflect one of my IDs and I think so you can see it um, change on my own. So what I'm going to do, instead of calling it lounge room lamp, uh, clips, change this ID, I'm going to call that uh, light dot, i uh, got lamp in the master bedroom. Light master underscore bedroom lamp A. And to reflect that as well for the image for that lamp, lounge lamp, I'm going to change the ID master bedroom lamp. Okay. Now within the areas. While we've done the path, the path is just going to be our template. A, um, we're not going to use that directly. Well, technically we are, but what we want to do next is go to add a new element and we're going to do SVG use. And for this, we want it to be above. We don't actually want it to be... We want it to be in the groove still. Okay. And path up the top. Okay. So use below path, and we are going to give this the ID, and this is now going to be the light for that area. And we are working in under the um, subtree of master bedroom. So we're going to do light dash master bedroom and, you know, make it the name that's relevant. Master underscore bedroom. So this is the entity ID for the light of that light area. Master bedroom underscore main one. And we do href um, to reference that path ID. So we'll go new attribute href and we do the pound, um, the hash and we type in the ID of, uh, yes, anyway, we um, type in the ID of the path. So it's path 896. I just want to make sure that's correct. Uh, da, 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 da. So we got, yeah, I'm not interested in that. What are we interested in? Probably this one. So we go use, give it the ID, with blah, 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 X link href. So we'll make sure it's a X link href. So instead of href, I'll get the X link href and to that part of um, the one above. Now I'm going to do kitchen and we are going to do the same thing. Um, what I find is easier now, again, duplicate node. Um, bring it over to here. Fortunately, it doesn't really give you a good indication where it's going to be placed in the XML editor. And we are going to say we want to use path 902 now as it shows above it. And the ID is going to be light dot kitchen main. And if you have a motion sensor in any of these rooms, you can again go down, um, duplicate that, and keep the path the same. And this time the ID is going to be binary underscore sensor. And of course, being the binary of your motion sensor, which in this case will be kitchen underscore motion. 
Now, there's one other issue. You want the binary to be above light. Reason being because if this is going to be over on top, then you won't be able to click on light to be a toggle as it will be behind the binary. So it's not too, it doesn't matter much, but what you want clickable is obviously logical to be on um, top first layer. Now, once we've done that, go through, go through each room and do the same. And again, if you have the um, binary sensor and you want a indication that there's motion happening in that room, then add the um, add a second use um, element with the um, binary sensor entity ID. I'll finish this off and I'll get back to you. All right, so I've gone ahead and done all of that. Now I think we've got something to really work with. Again, yours will grow as you add more entities, more lights. Um, you would obviously tailor your um, SVG to match your kind of floor plan that you're after. But for simplicity and for this tutorial, I think this will be enough. So now we'll save and make sure we do save a copy. And again, make sure we go down, optimized F SVG. Save over the optimized and keep everything the same. Okay, replace. Now we're going to head over to the YAML configuration for it. I've added a, um, a quick style here. And what this is doing is saying, Uh, the HA card, and this is from um, card mod, if you've got that installed. Uh, margin zero auto, that will um, place it in the center. Background, we get rid of the um, HA card background, and we'll do a maximum width of the viewport height. Now I chose viewport height as 150 because we are generally looking at our viewports in a landscape mode, and our height is more of a consistent variable setting. So that means I'm going to do a refresh. Actually, what I'll do, inspect, right click, empty cache and refresh. Then refresh from the YAML. For some reason, and I'm not sure what it is, and I am not going to spend time tracking it down for this purpose, but it's taken a while to load when I um, first placed it in. Now, as you can see, we don't have, now this is what I told you to work, um, be careful about, is if we go back to the SVG, we have our light overlays turned off, meaning they're not actually um, a part of the output for that file. So remember to turn it back on, go to File, save a copy. So... When I say this is when you turn on a light or something and you don't actually see that light being um, shown as a um, overlay, then that's probably the reason why. Go to the floor plan, optimize, click OK and replace. Now if we do another empty cache and hard reload, this should show the actual the image, the full image of the light that is um, up, to up topmost, and it did. So you can see the outlines of the um, rooms and all that. So what we should do now is start our CSS. And to do, we'll start with getting rid of these, um, the lines. All right, so what we'll do, we'll go into here and we will go, I'm going to go down, look for floor plan tutorial and we got our CSS. I'm going to have a quick look in um, my previous one just to see how I initially set it up. Don't worry about keyframes, uh, SVG pointer events. Now I think pointer events all important. Look, when you um, develop and you start doing it, you just add things in at the time that is relevant. And there's times when it'll take me a while to click on what I put these in here for. 
points for events all pretty much means that it needs to take into consideration all events from the um, mouse clicks for all um, elements in the SVG. Cursor, auto, um, yeah. So, look, I'm going to copy and paste this just to give us a starting point and template. Uh, didn't I double-click the other one? So, go back, floor plan. I don't want to have them both open anyway, just so I don't get too confused. Um, so we're going to start off a path. And remember, this is the area. So when you look at, we'll keep that one open. And when you look into, it, it, this is such a um, very helpful tool for things like this. And we're going to go in and we can see it's in the areas ID group of areas. So we can, um, we can specifically target areas in our CSS selector and the subtree from there. So if we go to here, the ID areas, then we can sub down from there and we can say all paths. And I'm not sure if it needs to be used as well. I'm not, I don't use SVGs very much. So trying to remember all the attributes and whether it needs to be used or path is a bit blurry at most, but it is a path anyway because the use statements are just a reference of that path. And what we'll do is change the path and do stroke width. Well, we'll start off with stroke. We'll make that transparent. And stroke width to be zero. We'll save that. And let's see how that goes. Hmm. That's weird. I'm going to try to do that empty cache refresh. Sure, it must have done something. Areas, path, transparent. Maybe it's one of these that did, I'm not sure. But what we will do here is light overlays. So let's go to light overlays. We are going to go and do um, initially display none. So we'll do display none. We're not going to do it to the actual light overlay um, element itself. We want to do it to the images below. So I just want to make sure that ID was light overlay. Uh, background, light, dash overlays, and we want it on the image. So light overlays image. So now as we are specifically targeting those images in the light overlay um, group, we're going to say display none. Empty cache and hard reset. I'm just going to have a quick look at what's going on here. Now we got. I'm going to go to background and we got our light overlays. ID light overlays that could just be spelling mistake. We got display none. So none of these should be displaying. Display none. Let's just do a quick refresh on there as well. I'm not sure if it's got anything to do with this. Yeah, might have had something to do with one of those um, options, but that seemed to have worked. What I also want to do, um, within the actual light overlays, we're going to do our light blend from there. So light overlays, 
Actually, what I'll do, no, we'll do it on the image itself. I'm going to go mix blend mode. And what was it? Um, hard lines, green lines, soft lines. No, we have a screen overlay. What was it? No, it wasn't overlay. I think it was either, it wouldn't be screen. Screen comes out to lighten, I think it is. I'm just going to check my other one for reference. I'm pretty sure it's lighten. Uh, I don't know where it is in here. Image, blend mode, lighten. So we'll do lighten. And what I want to do, and we'll get this working off the bat, we're going to go back light overlays. And what you can see I've done in this one, because it's getting a bit cluttered and full, I started to comment and making mentions in different areas. So here I've got cosmetic styles media players and speakers. So it might be a good idea if you want to start grouping and making sure it's neat. But just remember that cascading styles is exactly that cascading. Where you place your CSS is important for overrides and so forth. So the ones lower have higher um, priority than the ones above. So if we go to overlay image, and when we do overlay image, the image itself, we are going to state light on, and you'll see why in a minute. We want display to be a block. I think we want it to be a block. Block sounds good to me. Gonna have to pause this in a second because I can smell my tea's almost done in the oven. Now, with those basics set up, we can see also that those lines have gone now. Um, we'll worry about that one after and that one as well. But let's just get the um, what I should be doing as well is making that background a lot more and darker. Um, to do that. I can do it through CSS or I can do it through Photoshop. I think I'll quickly do it in Photoshop. Just, uh, yeah. So I'll go right click or plan. What I'll do, guys, is um, stop the video here, quickly darken that background and have my tea, then I'll um, join you guys later and finish this off. All right, now we're back at it. I've um, darkened that image through Photoshop. From here, I think it's time to bind it all together and use um, HA floor plan to do that with their rules. So the first rule I think is the most sensible to do is the lights and the um, overlays for them. So let's go to rules. <clears throat> Sorry. Go to rules. And we're going to add our first one. So rules is a bunch of arrays. And we can start with either entity or entity. So a target. Now we're going to do entities and we're going to do all our lights. Um, let's do arrays. I like to do it like this. And we do light. For each of your lights that are, um, sorry, that are an overlay, I'm just going to open up because this is not my actual home. It's actually something I'm doing for a tutorial, so I'm trying to get my head around what rooms they were. And I think it might just be easier if I go in here and copy and paste. So we've got light overlay. We don't want to worry about that. We want to worry about light, master bedroom. Um, light kitchen main. Is 
light um, laundry main. I'm just going to go off the top of my head. Oh, damn. Laundry main. Light uh, dining. I don't actually have a dining one, so it doesn't matter about that. Light dot living room main. Main. Light dot kids bedroom. And light. We got kitchen, kids bedroom, living, bathroom. What else? Some bathroom, laundry done, kids dining, living room, study. I dot study thing. Just for consistency, I'm just going to call that main as well. So these are the entities that will trigger this rule. Now, for this rule, we want it to be one, a toggle. So when we do tap action, the good thing I like about this as well, they can let you just, um, if it's a specific simple action, we can just do toggle instead of, um, you know, generally you do action down here, then toggle. At least they um, got rid of that. So. You can still keep it like that, it doesn't matter. And then we want a state action. Now, a state action is on something when one of these entity changes, it will process through the state. Um, so we got state action. And um, we want to target the element. So the element, and we're going to do a JavaScript function. And we're going to do... The entity. So the entity is going to be assigned the actual entity that was passed through. So it'll be the entity of that object. Then we're going to do dot entity ID and we want to replace, sorry, entity ID. And then we want to replace. And this is why we've done that ID before. So we're targeting the actual element now. Um, that was assigned by ID. So the element would be the ID of here. So in this case, we want to do, so <clears throat> a light will come in. Let's say it's light master bedroom underscore main. We want that to be light underscore overlay dot master bedroom dot main. So we're targeting that actual element. So we're going to replace light with light overlay dot and the rest will be um, self-explanatory. I'm just going to double check my um, just review just to make sure we're on the same page with that. Actually, yeah, that's all fine. And then we go to style and I'm going to copy and paste this and I'll go through what it's doing. I just it's just um, easier than having to write it all out again. So we've got style. <clears throat> so what this is going to do is say, state action, we're going to target this element, and this is how we are going to style it. I'm pretty sure it is state action. It is state action. Uh, no, so state action, action, call service, that's style. Okay, so sorry. I'm going to copy. So state action then you have to say what kind of action that state action is. Which I feel is, yeah, that's fine. And we're going to tab this over one because it's a service data. So the action is a call service as they hooked into the call service and the service is floor plan style set. You can see all this on their documentation. Then the service data is what we want to feed into that actual service. Now, this is an actual um, back-end service. This is actual front-end service. It's been um, hijacked by um, HA floor plan. And it's going to process this. And, again, we're going to get the element, change it to light overlay, and we're going to style it like this. If entity, entity state is not on, then we're going to return display none, which we've already got a default 
CSS style for that, which is here, display number. There's no harm in making sure that's there. Um, we return because it's been returned. The code stops there. It doesn't keep flying. But if it's not on none, then we're going to go let hue. Uh, this is like setting the variable. We do let hue equals zero. Let saturation, or I call it sat, equals zero. Now, if entity attributes HS color, which you'll find, so just saying, is this a colored light? Then if so, then we want the hue to equal that um, attribute of that color. Now, this is in the crash course on um, working with the JavaScript and Home Assistant, but you should be able to get a grasp of it or have a little bit of insight on how to um, use JavaScript and Home Assistant. Now, if we've got a saturation below 10, then there's really no need for the hue and saturation at, as such because it's going to be white. So here we're just going to return, display as a block, filter, brightness, and we're going to calculate the brightness, entity, attribute, brightness. And don't forget, this is all done by backtick, so we can use the backtick expressions with the dollar sign and thing to access our variables. And then we divide that as calc is a CSS function and divided that by 255. Now, if it is higher than 10, then we are returning a block and we're going to filter and we're going to add a sepia of 100%. Sepia just makes a um, image more old fashioned orange tint as such. Now, the reason we do that is because we want to use a hue rotation and a saturate. Now, if I go into here and I'll go into my light here, a hue rotation is exactly that. If we got a saturation of this much, so let's say the outer we go, the higher the saturation. But the saturation's here, the hue rotation will go around there. That's as much, but if the hue is here, the rotation is going to stay as white. So we add a sepia to go up to here, then we can control the saturation and rotate to get the color values we want. And you can see the effect happening here, pink, purple, red, and whatnot. So that's why we add the sepia to it, uh, rotate, saturate, and of course, brightness. And having all of that, we're going to save. And then we will go into, back into here, we'll go close. I want to do a quick refresh. Do a refresh here while passing block, uh, line 37. Just double check if where your errors could be. Element, I think because, I don't know why. Um, because they got the same quotation, they think so I'm ending, so I'm going to change it to double quote. And double quote, so it doesn't conflict with these ones in the middle. Save that. Uh, reload. And you can see the lights on already for a specific room. Now, I remember the pointer now. This is where I say you start to actually modify your CSS as you go along. And that's why I would have had that pointer to null. So I'm going to put that back in. The floor plan and uh, that's the old one, but I might go SVG. Actually, I might just quickly open the other one. And down here, you'll see pointer events, cursor, auto, important. Okay, so we'll go copy. I don't want to copy everything because actually that one doesn't seem too bad. I'll just get rid of that group button. So I'm not too sure why that's even in there at the moment. But these two should be very generic and straightforward. Now that was a CSS change, so we'll empty cache and reload. And that gets rid of that pointer. I mean, you can keep that pointer, that is entirely up to you, but I prefer it without the pointer. And if we click on here, it will turn that light off. And it did also turn the light off in my home. Um, we turn on study, actually I don't have a study, so we turn on the master bedroom and it's turned on. We'll turn on the bathroom, click and so forth. 
Now these should all be reflecting and working. It's all bound together and everything should be showing. What I, you can also do is let's go to, uh, there's another, that was stars, but we want to do a class as well and onto that element. Now if, no, we wanted to do these entities for the areas. And I think there's a easier way of doing that if it's on. Um, we want to do another state action, but we want to do it as class set. So I'll go in and we'll copy these again because you can't have two state actions in the same um, area. Then we can go here. And again, these will be the entities. And we're not going to change all of this. We are just going to do, actually what we want to do is do tap action false so it doesn't react to a tap action. You can change all that through the defaults and whatnot for um, this um, card. But we won't get into that for now. I want to do state action. And when the state changes for a specific entity, we want action to be cool service and service to be floor plan. I think it's uh, dot set class or class set. I might just go to my other floor plan quickly just to see. Yeah, it's further up uh, somewhere there. I'm going to keep that open so it's easy to get to. And we want, um, we got the lights here, state action, full service, class set. And I might just copy that. So what this is going to do, service, class set, service data, light entity state, the variable of that entity state. So it's going to add a class to that um, entity and that element. It's not going to pick the other element. It's actually going to pick the element of that that matches that ID or the entity. So that's going to be this specifically light living room main. It's going to be targeting that element there. With that element set, we got light and it's going to give it a state. So because we're doing that, did I save? No, I didn't save that. Right click, empty cache, hard reload, and we'll do a reload up here as well. Refresh. And here you'll see if we go inspect, We got the light laundry, and you can see class is on. Now, if we go to light bathroom, I think the bathroom is on. Let's go to light kitchen, light off. Now we can target these on CSS based on what their state is. Now, if we go in and we'll go back to our CSS, we can now go and choose areas. Let's bring that down further. And now we can do areas, because it's in the areas group, we can do path and specifically target light on. And we can have a stroke width, change the stroke width of it to be, um, I don't know, I'll say three. And stroke color. I'll just change to blue for now. So with that, so what this is doing is targeting path and we're having the, um, we're targeting the class on that specific path element. We could take out the path element, but I find it's better just to keep it there to ensure it's um, going to target that. So now we go 
click refresh. Actually, that was a CSS. Right click empty cache. And uh, because it's a use, just going to inspect quickly. Half uh, light on. It doesn't have our thing. It's because we're not doing it to a path. We're doing it to the use. This is what gets me with the, um, you know what, bugger it, light on, refresh, and this still didn't work, okay. I think I had another problem with that and I think I was to do with something over here, just, let's just add this, now this is why you have to feel inherit, 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 and this is to do with the actual way of styling uh, SVGs. Now I just want to add them in, and if this doesn't work, I'm just going to quickly review what I did in my other CSS, but I'd like to try to nail it down before I resort to that. Now, see, something is, oh, I know why. The feel and all that is all being, um, is all been inherited. So I want to take fill, change that to none. Okay, that fixes that. Now I am going to resort to the CSS to find out why my um, light on isn't showing. Stroke glue, SVG, light, uh, path areas. Do, 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 do. I'm quickly going to do light dash on. No, it's not on active here. Yeah. SVG floor plan, show lines, <coughs> stroke, stroke. Oh, yeah. The other good thing you can also use is your um, variables from your themes and. Um, Everything else in between. Maybe it's strict capacity. I can't imagine it being that. Okay, um, we'll try strict capacity to one. And I'll try a width and change that to three pixels, not three. Maybe that could be why I thought we were just working. Actually, I'll change that first just to see the result. No, so then again, I don't even know if it's applying those styles. Yeah, it's got those styles here. Now that means we can actually work with it locally. And as you can see, it's the target area main um, light on. And we're going to do opacity. And we're going to change that to one. But I don't see how that would be the reason why it's not showing. Um, I didn't know you could do that. Blue. Now I know because it's a use, it's not the same as a path. Um, what I might do is pause, quickly investigate, and then we can move on. So I've just done a quick test, and it turned out that it was because. We're adding stroke transparent to this path. This was not overriding. Uh, I'm not sure why, but this light on is going to be a use element, which is using the path, which made the stroke trans. I don't know. It's confusing me, but look, we'll go get we'll get rid of that because it's clearly becoming an issue, and we'll get rid of that one. And at least these will show when they're turned on. And if we save that, and we'll click empty cache hard reload, and we get our, you know, the, when the light's on, it'll get that outline. When it's off, it won't. So that's the nature of CSS and HTML and editing is 
finding out the caveats and compensate for things that aren't working. There used to be so many different hacks prior to even CSS3 just to even get around some quirks. So it has improved a lot since many years ago. Uh, again, XML is um, not XML, sorry. Um, SVG is still a very um, unfamiliar territory for me when it comes to styling, but I have plenty of experience in CSS itself. But for this case, we're going to go light on, we'll do blue, but obviously I wouldn't have a color. Um, once you've got something in there to change, we can change it here and just find the color that you are happy with. And, you know, pink, purple, whatever. Um, I don't like the width, I want a bit more width. And change it back in the um, CSS file. So six pixels and uh, that color. Again, you probably want to stick with your theme colors and using bars in your CSS or just hard code it. It really does not uh, matter too much. Six. Now. We can do a little bit of animation. I'm just going to copy and paste them because I don't want to reinvent the wheel or, you know, spend too much time on the um, cosmetic side of things. So in my CSS, I've got something where we can do heat pulse, group pulse, fade in. I'll do fade in. This is keyframe CSS free feature. And I like to keep my keyframes up top, neat and tidy. And generally what we're going to do for the light overlay, we're going to do uh, animate, animation. And I'm just going to copy the one I've already got in here. Light overlays, animation. So this animation will play every time it's being displayed. And it's just a simple fade in from opacity zero to one. Now, if we go right click and turn that on, and we turn on the kitchen, you can see it fading in. Same with this fade in. When you turn it off, it doesn't do the fade effect, and that's a issue where it's completely removing it before it um, before it can even animate out. I mean, there's ways around it. You could just, um, instead of doing display none, you can do opacity back to zero or something like that. Uh, uh, I'm just happy to, to keep it like that. I don't care much for changing it just because I turned the light off. Lights, when you turn them off, generally go straight off. The next we want to do is, let, let's target that TV. And this time we're not going to do entities. We're just going to do an entity. But if you had multiple TVs, you could just do entities. Um, SVG, we want to go back to our floor plan, did I? Uh, config, yeah, sorry. And this time, I'm going to keep things up top so we can always reference whatever's above. And I'm going to do entity. So this time we're just targeting a specific entity. And... I think for a TV, we'll just do more info. So the entity we're targeting is Media Player, Living Room, Android. Um, on a tap action, we want more info. Again, you could do toggle or you could do a um, action call a service and call a service and, you know, all sorts. That's what I mean by it's very dynamic. We'll go down, we'll go refresh because we changed it in um, YAML. And we'll click and there you go. You can also change, uh, l l let's just say all the entities should probably start off in, um, sorry, my leg's playing up, so I'm in a bit of pain at the moment. <laughs> So with the CSS, oh, the knee.
within the entities, because that's in the entities group, we can go in and change them to default into a gray um, state. And I'll change it here. I'll just copy this, uh, show lines. That's not the one I want. Sorry, that pain from my leg has got my brain kind of going loopy at the moment, so I'm not really in the zone. Uh, this one will do. Stroke. So I'll explain what this does. We're going to target the group halves that are active. Um, these ones are relevant, light, active. Entities, G not touch area. Yep, okay. Now this is more for when you click on it, you get a feedback. So I'm going to save that and I'll show you what I mean. So you can see the outline when you click it. And the same goes over here. You get the outline knowing that you're targeting a specific area. Click, then it goes and changes to that. That's what that was um, there for, and I decided to put that in. So it gives the stroke, a stroke whip that's similar. It wasn't actually the one I was um, initially looking for, but I thought I'd uh, show you guys that one just to give you an insight into how you could do something similar. And I want something for entities, so it is entities. And I'm looking for, it should be up here somewhere. Group buttons. I'm gonna show you another little thing that will give you a little insight. As you can see here, I've got my lamp. Turn that off. And the other lamp. And I've got this little line here and a little group button, which will turn them both off. Or I can hold it down and give me the options. You can also do that within your SVG. And um, like if I click that on, it turns them both on. You know, they just get crafty. And, you know, that's just targeting a group dot um, master bedroom lamps entity. And when you hold it down, you get the group more info um add another animate so that you can see that animating there so that's another thing that you can think about exploring and the entities trying to find it's becoming a bit of a pain so you got media player and you can also add these states to your media player, which isn't a bad idea. And I think that's quite um, relevant right now. So I'm going to copy and show you those states in this. Uh, sorry, I'm back here. And the floor plan, this one. So in the group entities, media player, TV, media player, idle. And that is also a um, state action. So every time the state here changes, it will place that class. Um, we want this now to be a media player TV. Media player TV and the media player national title or whatever state it is. So. so it means that we can select them all, whether they're on or off by the class media player TV. And because there's a space, we can also select it specifically by media player, whether it's plain, on, off, idle, or whatever. And that's what that CSS over here was doing. If it's idle, if it's standby, if it's pause, then we want icon active color. Otherwise, we would use like media player plane. We would have a, I've got a pulsating effect. 
But for now, we'll keep it like that. We'll save that. What I might do is just quickly reference here because it's just going to be quicker and easier. Um, you see what I mean when everything's off? It's got this grey outline just to give you a indication that they're, you know, clickable and so forth. But that's what the um, style is actually trying to look for. And here we got um, light is a group, entities, path. Group button, that wasn't the one. So there's the path here. Item icon color. And so forth. Same here. Uh, switch coffee. So it's just um, a entity's path style. So I'm just going to copy that. You know what? Just copy declaration. And I'm going to go in and put it in here. That's uh, just copy the declaration, not the same thing. Copy, select the copy rule, copy all declarations. And of course, I've got to copy the. Well, there's a way to do it all in one, but yeah, anyway. All right, that was very awkward, sorry. So now if we go in and look, empty, uh, wrong one. Refresh, reload, empty cache, reload. Uh, that's not even a path, that's an ellipse. Uh, that one's a path. That one's got the... Should be in the entities, path, stroke, paper item color, stroke width, one pixel. And save. Just bear with me. Should be um, reflecting those changes, but for some reason it's not. Group entities path. Entities path. Drake width, da da da. Now, look, sometimes I just spend hours and whatever trying to figure out why something's not quite right. And this is one of those. Here you can see it's got the media player TV and the media player standby. That's the style it should have. But even here, I'm not seeing that style applied if standby was one of those styles. Standby there. So maybe that's why this one above it's not working because it's got standby if i do that but i didn't see that in the actual styles which is a bit weird and again it's not updating here Ah, <laughs> god damn, I see it now, and all of you guys that's watching probably screaming at me about it. I didn't spell entities, entities. F and bloody hell. You know what, I'm not even going to change that from the SVG. And for my own sanity, just, yeah. I'm going to finish this video up very soon. I think you guys have got a grasp <laughs> of um, what's what's um, needed to create something similar. My floor plan. That's how I spelt it in the um, SVG.
So let's do an empty cache refresh. And there you go. That is why that was being a problem and a hassle. That's why naming things are so important and always assuring their, um, you know, they're matching. Now, this has got that standby, but when that's not on standby, it would generally be, actually, we'll do this for ellipse as well. So you can see it on that. Um, I don't think that's how it is. I think it's ellipse. E L L I P S. So you can see there it's got that gray outline. Then I click it. Actually, we haven't got anything hooked into that yet. I'll just do a quick one, and I think we can finish up after that to um, make that lamp turn on. So for anything generic, that was also part of... I think you can go in here. Light dot... And what was that? Really? Lamp A. So light. Lamp A. Uh, tap action false, but it's going to get the light um, server starter for that state action. Then on the entities, we are going to do the same because it actually has a um, overlay that can go onto it. So again... Light, master bedroom, lamp A. When it's tapped, it will toggle, so the actual element. Then the state action, we're going to set that style for the element and so forth, which just means we're going to add that overlay. And you can see, just see it, it's not a very bright um, image. Turn it off and turn it back on. You can see it reflecting, and that light is green, and that was the bedroom lamp, which is kind of that color. Um, another thing you can do if you want to go in and do a hold action, and this is what I love about a simple addition like this, we can do more info, and now all of those entities, when we hold down the mouse button or tap, we get a more info dialog. Just skip, bear with me, tap action, hold action. Maybe it does need to be in a action. So action, more info. I thought I had that somewhere else. It was down, um, tap action down here, wasn't it? No, up here. See, I've done, yeah, I'm not sure if hold. Or did I only refresh up the top and not over here? <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Maybe I just didn't refresh up there or reload. Um, so you can hold here and bring up the display, turn on the light, then hold and, you know, change your colors. Uh, that color was a little bit of blue. We're going to change that to red. You can see the outline of the red. Um, lastly, not really lastly, but I'm just going to point it out, is that when that is toggled, you can go in here and just say um, when that path is either light on, then it can have that. Uh, same effect, so light on. And we're going to change the, we'll just make it the same color as this. Normally you would just have like an active color to state that something is active. So entities path light on as this entity will get that class set to it.
We have to remember we're not using the path. We're using a element of use that is referencing that path. So we don't want to target that path um, specifically. But I think that gives you a good, um, good enough info to get you guys going. I think that will also conclude the whole floor plan tutorials. There are like other bits and pieces I can do, individual videos for specific things that people might want or, um, you know, do something different. If I do, you can see here, just doing little tiny touches, you can see the light um, fading in and out to reflect like a TV's on and it's got a, um, you know, the pictures changing motion. Uh, that's just a simple keyframe. Just um, having two overlays of a certain light, one that's got a, it was an intense mixed blend mode, and I was just, um, it's an animate, a forever loop that just animates the opacity from one to zero. Um, other than that, you got, there's not much more to really discuss. You got just about everything that is reflected in here. Again, you can go into the floor plan. I'm going to do a quick scroll down to show you. Now, these things here is all from Lovelace Generator, and that's what I had that take up here for. And that just um, allows me to style my code easier and um, not have to rewrite everything and make sure everything's neat and tidy. Just looking for a honeycomb menu. So you can add a hold action and bring up your honeycomb. You can add the service data as such like this, or you can have a generic service data for the honeycomb menu. Let's just double click. So to get the honeycomb menu, you pull the service, service, honeycomb, then the service data of that honeycomb. Uh, down here, you got something a bit more simpler, template, base, buttons, um, yeah, so forth, and they're very self-explanatory. And when you're in here, you can see it in effect. Just hold that down. You can see I can um, just go straight to the speaker, start playing the music, and so forth. All right, guys, I hope everything has been... Um, touched on and you can get into creating your floor plan and finalizing it. I also think down the track I'll get into a bit more of Node Red, a bit more of the coding. I do want to show maybe you, you I, I'm a very um, high Google Assistant user, so I don't actually have services linked to Google, Assist, um, Google Assistant apart from Home Assistant. Home Assistant is the only thing linked that has all my entities, my vacuum cleaner and all sorts, and even my power switches. So nothing is going through the cloud. And I've actually done some changes where I can ask the Google Assistant to clean specific rooms, and all that is being handled by Home Assistant. And if that's of interest, then um, note it down in the comments, and I'll do a video on how to make something like that. So you can just ask us. Uh, Google Assistant, and this isn't with dialogue for, uh, dialogue flow. This is all done naturally. So thanks, guys. Hope you enjoy it. Take care. So there's one more thing I forgot. Just as I was um, finishing up the video and um, composing it, I realized that we didn't do the um, motion sensor. So just to make sure all topics are covered. I'm going to quickly um, show you that. Now, I've already laid it out just to make this quick and easy. Um, I'm going to uncomment that. And what we simply do is do entities, and we're going to add that binary sensor. And then we're just going to add a state action, motion, and the motion state that it's on. So I'm going to save that. And then in our CSS, uh, not that one, explore plan CSS. Now, previously we had that problem with the... Um, areas and hit the path and it would feel so if I click save on that we'd have the issue where 
I'm gonna go inspect, make sure it's not caching. It's not doing it at the moment, I think. Um, I think it had something to do, I don't know. Anyway, what well, ideally just go and target the areas, and when we do feel none, it's going to inherit throughout the whole um, SVG and the paths and all that. It, it just seems to like to be the fix where previously all the fill was black. Um, as we do that, we can then add in, don't need that one. We're going to add a CSS style called motion on for the areas because they, the light and the motion um, are using the same path, so we can style each separately. And on this case, we're doing areas motion on, and we're going to do a fill to be um, that certain color and the stroke, which is like the border, to be more of a reddish color. Uh, give it a stroke with it. And we're going to give it an animation to fade in. We've already got the fade in up here. Uh, infinite, alternate, and one second between zero and 100% of the transition. So if we save that, we're going to do a quick, Empty cache. I'll also do a refresh because we have changed the YAML. And here, I'm not going to go physically turn the sensor on. I'm just going to change the value here. And if we go to on, you can see now it's flashing in and out. If we turn the light off, you can see the outline of the red. So I just wanted to make sure that we got that topic covered. And as you can see, that's a very dodgy line when I was um, doing the outline, but regardless, just for um, tutorial purposes, it will do. Anyway, sorry for that. Enjoy.